Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, we'll recap North Dakota's sweep of Wisconsin in Madison this past weekend. We'll also hear from Michael Parks' teammates on the senior right wing's play of his recent weeks. And we'll look ahead to North Dakota's return to league play as they welcome Miami in this coming weekend in NCHC play. North Dakota went to Madison last weekend, defeated Wisconsin 4-3 on Friday night, and completed the sweep with a 5-1 win on Saturday night. Coach, good to be back with you again. You finished strong in each of the third periods on Friday and Saturday for your victories. Yeah, I thought uh, on Friday night, I thought we played a good three periods. I thought we were consistent throughout with our, uh, with our effort, with our execution. We had an outstanding third period. Saturday, always a little bit different, always a little bit tougher to win that second one. Um, we had our, uh, you know, we had our issues in the second period, some bumps in the road, but we evened that out and had a great third period. How pleased are you, Coach, with the balance that you're getting from up and down your lineup uh, in terms of contributors night in and night out on those guys when they're getting chances to get in the lineup as well? Well, I think, I think that's the key to our, our, our success to this point. Uh, is having everybody contribute on every given night and that's now that's something we've talked about right from the start of the year we know that we have to have contributions from everybody that's in the lineup we have to have players that are ready to come in uh, in case of uh, of injury or opportunity uh, and thus far we've had that and that's something that uh, we'll continue to work at developing five road games this year for UND five road wins equaling the best road start to a season since 1980 when we come back we'll take a look at Friday night highlights here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Dave, let's take a look at Friday night's highlights from the Cole Center in Madison. The Badgers with their home opener on Friday and, as you said, throw away their 0-4 record coming into this series. And what did you think of your start here in the opening at 10 to 12 minutes of the first period on Friday night? Well, Dan, I liked our start. I, I liked our third period. You know, I didn't think we, we dominated the period by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought we did a good job in being prepared. Uh, to play against a high energy team, a team that was playing in their home opener. Chris breakout here leading to a three on two. See, so outshot the Badgers 12 7 in the first period. Yeah, the real key was, you know, in, uh, getting and gaining good opportunities just by playing simple hockey. Uh, you know, we gave up a couple uh, at the other end that Zane Gothberg had to be sharp on, mm -hmm. uh, and he was, and he gave us that opportunity to go out and build a lead. Your penalty kill, four of five, and Troy Stetcher in this sequence makes not one but two real good plays on the penalty kill. Well, you use the word making plays. That's what he is on our penalty kill. He's a playmaker, and uh, you see it time and time uh, again with Troy. Yeah, yeah, I believe you recorded us saying he's just battling his butt off these days for you, right? Uh, it's, I mean, that's when you're, you know, when you're killing penalties, that's where a lot of it starts. Uh, but, you know, his instincts in making plays, how good his stick has been, uh, has, has really given us a uh, good force on our penalty yeah. kill. Did you feel like uh, you were getting the traffic in front of Joel Rumpel and getting chances in front of him that you would have liked to see in the first period on I, Friday? I don't know that we got to a lot of second pucks, but, you know, you see us whipping pucks there. That was a good play by Luke Johnson, and that, you know, it creates this play here for Paul Ledoux to spin off and get a puck to the net mm -hmm. with traffic. So uh, I like the simplicity of our game. So scoreless after one in the Cole Center on Friday night. We'll go to the second period now. Austin Paganski back in the lineup working below the goal line here is going to create a chance and that'll lead to a Wisconsin chance and then a subsequent Badgers power play. Yeah, it was a you know great play by uh, Brendan O'Donnell out to uh, number 14 Paganski. Uh, we get caught uh, with a few too many guys going north as the defenseman jump down to, uh, to look for that rebound. Uh, and, uh, you know, we give up the good opportunity that we take the penalty on. As I said, you killed off four or five Badger power plays. This would be the only power play that they would get on the night for a one nothing lead. Well, and, you know, we did a heck of a good job throughout this PK. Uh, their number nine makes a real good play uh, on a broken play, and then, uh, unfortunately, we end up screening uh, Zane a little bit uh, when that puck comes to the net, and that from uh, number five of Wisconsin. One thing you did this weekend, you did answer I thought in real timely fashion at a, a number of different points and one of them here just three minutes after Wisconsin scores you get the power play goal from Connor Gorder. Well this was a real key for uh, for Brad and talking to our power play units. We have to win draws and then we need to get pucks to the net with traffic off of that draw. It's exactly what happened. Connor Gorder, Steph Patton, uh, 
combine to win the faceoff. Uh, Keaton Thompson does a good job pulling it and dragging it to the middle and getting it to the net. And, uh, we've got two guys there for rebounds. How about your power play against Wisconsin's box? Because they were pretty tight with their box in stages over the weekend. You know what? I, I thought we did a good job uh, staying with what we wanted to do. Uh, there's uh, there's a goal later in the third period where I think we have three shots blocked uh, before we score a power play goal. So uh, I like the presence of mind. Good chances here as Nick Schmaltz sets up Michael Parks and then Schmaltz himself with a chance. And then late second period now, uh, a turnover at center ice is going to lead to the Badgers' go-ahead goal. Yeah, you know, and this is one that, uh, that we want to have back. Um, you've got to take care of pucks, especially at key times of games. You know, we've had a great first period here. And, uh, you know, I won't take anything away from Troy because he's a guy that's aggressive and uh, nine out of ten times he makes that play. Uh, but the turnover at center ice uh, leads to a 2-1 deficit for us going into the intermission. Late goal in the second period for the Badgers. But as we said, third period, both nights were a winning edge for you. And just three minutes and 12 seconds into the period, Luke Johnson is going to drop for Colton St. Clair, and it's tied at two here. Yeah, again, we have traffic going to the net. We make a play to a stick, which is critical. Luke Johnson makes a play right to Colton St. Clair. He has the shooting opportunity. Make sure that he gets it on goal, and it finds a hole with uh, with Steph Patton going there. Did you think that really turned the momentum? Because he went on and dominated the period, outscore, uh, outshot him 14-3 in a big third period. Yeah, I think you know sometimes that has a bit of a way of uh, rattling your opponent a little bit, especially a bit of a young Wisconsin roster. Yeah, uh, I thought uh, that got them back on their heels. Uh, but most importantly, we just kept pushing. We kept coming. Three minutes after the tying goal, the power play that I believe you referred to just a bit ago, it was a really strong power play. It produced four shots on goal and ends up with the go-ahead goal here. Yeah, well, like I said, you're going you're gonna to have shots blocked against the, the PK that uh, Wisconsin was running. Key is to recover those, stay with it, and continue to make plays. Michael, Park pop, Michael Parks pops into that shooting spot right there. Uh, with about five feet of movement, and uh, Jordan Schmaltz finds him for the uh, go-ahead. Go-ahead goal, 3-2 now, and just uh, a little more than four minutes later, you get the uh, goal that would be the eventual game-winning goal, and it's your sixth shorthanded goal of the year. The Badgers hard rim it. Michael Parks kind of catches the defenseman there flat-footed. Well, Michael Parks is uh, is fresh. He just came on the ice. Uh, he sees a, you know, an opportunity for one of our triggers to pressure a bouncing puck. Uh, tough for the defenseman to handle wins the puck battle, wins the race, and, uh, and finishes it off. Parks' goal makes it 4-2. The Badgers scored a late goal, and then you hold them off in the final seconds for a 4-3 win to open the series in Madison. We uh, spoke with Connor Gorder and Colton St. Clair following the win. I thought our guys played uh, well the whole way through, and, um, you know, we didn't get the bounces there in the first two periods, but we stuck with it, and uh, there in the third, uh, it started clicking pretty well for us. We got some power plays, and... Uh, Made it happen there in the third. You know, our penalty kill is doing a really good job. Um, you know, but there's a reason we're able to get shorthanded goals. You know, I think everyone's doing their job, uh, you know, playing defense first. And, you know, when they see an opportunity to jump, they're jumping. So North Dakota opens the weekend series with a 4-3 win. And coming up next, Coach and I will take a look at Saturday night's highlights. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back, North Dakota and Wisconsin, back in the Kohl Center on Saturday night. Dave, let's take a look at highlights. And uh, this evening, uh, you would get the early jump in the hockey game. Well, I thought our start and, and uh, our willingness to do simple things again over and over for 60 minutes was going to be the key to this hockey game. Uh, and we came out and we had a very good start. Mm -hmm. Troy Stetcher carrying, attacking, putting a low shot on, and it comes out to Brendan O'Donnell, and he buries it for the one nothing lead. Yeah, well, if, if Troy makes a, a soft play to the middle of the rink, uh, instead of putting that on the pads, it's probably a turnover going the other way. Instead, puts it off the pads, and we've got numbers then coming for that second mm -hmm. puck. And, uh, Brennan O'Donnell makes a great play and just uh, puts it high top shelf. Kept the pressure coming in the first period, didn't you? We did. You know, Luke Johnson here on a great speed play. We end up with two or three good opportunities off of this. It just won't uh, won't find the back of the net. Right. Uh, but that's uh, that's pushing a team back on their heels. 17 shots on goal. Key play in the first period here by Stetcher. He's going to clear a puck from the paint and the goal line here to save a goal. 
Yeah, we just got weak in our net front coverage. You see two guys uh, with their feet turned south looking uh, at the yeah. back of the net. Rather than just taking care of our job and taking care of that net front, uh, Zane makes a great save, and then uh, Troy saves it as it's uh, also just rolling towards the goal line. Yeah, great play by Stetcher. Late first period, Badgers assessed a five-minute penalty for interference. Is this part of the new rule in which officials can decide if they're going to address a interference with a five-minute penalty? Well, you know, it depends what the call is, and uh, I think they uh, they made a call that it was a blindside hit rather than a hit to the head. That yeah. allows the player to stay in the game, and uh, that's certainly a judgment call that they can make. So you carry over most of the five minutes to the second period. You knew one way or another that momentum would likely change in some way depending upon what happened with this power play, correct? Yeah, that, that four minutes was really the probably the, uh, the key turning point to the second period. It set the tone. It was yeah. either going to build momentum for us or it was going to build momentum for Wisconsin and they did a great job on the PK we were a bit sloppy uh, and it leads to uh, uh, the tying goal uh, yeah. as you know as they built a good second period yeah that was just a couple minutes after the power play ended but just three minutes later here you get another answer as it's a great play by Nick Schmaltz setting up Drake Kajula it is and you know the hidden play there is a good play by Andrew Panzarella uh, makes a good simple play uh, on the neutral zone transition but he also drives that middle lane, which is what opens up this play. Uh, and it is a great play from Nick to Drake, and uh, uh, they make, both make no mistake. Zay McIntyre really preserved the lead the rest of the second period with a number of good saves here. Yeah, I thought he had three or four good saves uh, through the rest of the second period. Um, you know, and that's, that's his job. I didn't think we were uh, all that sharp in the second. We couldn't get any uh, rhythm or momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought we settled things enough, down enough, to get through the second period and, uh, and reset before we went out for the third. I thought after that last save we just saw, you, you had some momentum here attacking late in the second period. Well, we, we just said we have to get back to doing you know, simple things one after another. Uh, uh, and I thought we did that. Uh, and that, you know, as again, uh, like I said, good saves by Zane. Uh, good presence of mind by everybody on the bench. Uh, we were able to right, right the ship and uh, get through the second period. All right, we go to the third period now, and um, this is going to be a key sequence of the game. Zane McIntyre makes a big save on a rebound attempt, and then you're going to go back and score here shortly after this. Yeah, and we've seen that time and time again. Zane's given us this opportunity. Uh, you know, we go back the other direction here. Good play by Steph Patton getting out of his own. Uh, and then, uh, you know, again, that's just shooting the puck to the net. And yeah. We saw a lot of rebounds drop within two, three, four feet of the crease. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got that puck there. And obviously, we just get a good break here uh, with their defenseman uh, bumping it into the back of the net. So McIntyre makes the save. Johnson scores the goal. And just 44 seconds later, two good plays off the wall in the defensive zone lead to the goal here to make it 4-1. Yeah. Lead to this goal. And if there's a different angle of this, if you saw it from behind, you would see... Uh, that their goaltender has no chance to see this puck because of the positioning at net front of Michael Parks. And Troy Stetcher made a good deke. That D-man bit hard, went down, and Stetcher fired it in. Yeah, he was able to open his hips and just hold the puck and, uh, and create the shooting lane. And by that time, Parks, he was set at net front, yeah. and, uh, and it was a good shot and a great goal. Shortly after that, you went on the power play, so you held momentum, didn't score on the PP, but then Gage Osmus uh, makes it 5-1 here, and you put the win away. Yeah, that was you know, it was truly the nail in the coffin there to, to salt it away from there. We just had to uh, run down the clock and, and play smart hockey. Yeah, so North Dakota with a 5-1 win completes the two-game sweep. Following the game, we spoke with Zane McIntyre, the Schmaltz brothers, and Troy Stetcher. We did uh, a really good job of kind of containing the second chance opportunities and uh, just controlling the rebounds as well. And uh, we capitalized and executed on the situations and chances that we had. You know, coming back to Madison, obviously it's uh, special for my family and uh, friends and, and Nick too as well and it's uh, we were lucky enough to get two wins in front of those guys so was, that's always fun. I was growing up I always came to the Badger games uh, watching and had season tickets so it's pretty cool to get to play out here and, uh, and fr friends and family and, and especially uh, get a couple wins so it's huge. Uh, anytime you can go on the road and get two wins especially a big time rival like Wisconsin it, uh, it's a good building block for a hockey team moving forward so um, you know we had a mindset coming in here getting two wins that's exactly what we did so it's a, it's a positive weekend. Dave, a lot of times we talk about the first period and establishing strong play in the opening 20, but uh, recently here it's been the play of your team in the third period that's been the difference between winning hockey games and maybe not winning those games. Well, it is, and I guess I'll counter a little bit with uh, over this weekend uh, setting up good third periods by playing well from the drop of the puck, and I thought we did that on the road. I think that's, uh, that's real key for our team. 
Um, you know, our level of play in the third period was good. Um, but I think it had a lot to do with good, solid play in the first two periods. I would imagine that breeds some confidence within your hockey team, though, knowing that uh, at any juncture of the game, they're able to come back if they have to. Well, it's just a continued building process, and I, I think the confidence uh, within our players is there in the locker room. Um, I, I think the presence of mind is there to know what they have to do in order to go out and win games. Uh, and then obviously it comes down to execution on a shift-by-shift -shift basis. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up next on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell, Michael Parks is playing mighty fine hockey these days. We'll hear from his teammates, and we'll preview North Dakota's upcoming NCHC series with Miami. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Michael Parks and Mark McMillan have been line mates in each part of every season they've played together at North Dakota. And Parks has shown big time leadership lately with his buddy and his line mate Mark McMillan down with injury. Parks has been a pick me up man for McMillan and his teammates. Three consecutive multi point games, 11 points in his last seven games for the senior right winger. Here's what his teammates have to say about his play of recent. He's a great leader and he's strong on the puck and he, uh, he does all the right things all the time, so he's been a great player for us right now. He's been really good for us, uh, you know, especially down low. Uh, he's playing all three zones, which is really good. You know, that's what you want, a uh, complete player. And, uh, you know, like I said, down low, he's just, he's so strong in the puck, and, you know, he finds his line mates, and, uh, you know, it works his way to the net very well. Dave, Michael Parks is really playing well in uh, three areas of the game. He's playing with speed. He's a tough guy to defend these days, right? Yeah, you know, he's, uh, you know, you mentioned with Mark McMillan going out of the lineup. Um, you know, he's one of the guys that's really picked up slack, and uh, I think it's more than that. I think it's just uh, Michael taking a step here in his senior year, having a realization, um, you know, of what his, uh, what his team needs from him, uh, and most importantly, uh, you know, for him personally, just taking that next step. Uh, in his career at the University of North mm -hmm. Dakota. All right, Dave, you're back into NCHC play this weekend. It should be a doozy. Miami coming to the Ralph this weekend. Uh, Miami 7-3-0 and on the season, and of course, uh, a well-known commodity to your hockey program. And not surprising at this juncture of the season, they're leading the nation in shots on goal anyway with the offensive power that they bring. Yeah, this group has such outstanding depth up front uh, and depth with top-end players. Uh, so it's an outstanding forward group. Um, you know, they haven't given up very much. They've given up very, you know, a very few number of uh, average shots per game. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got a great team coming in here uh, and should be a great NCHC matchup. What do you see as the uh, points of emphasis for your hockey team this week and getting ready for Miami? Well, just for us, just continuing to do what we do. You know, we're not, uh, we're not going to be too concerned with what other teams do uh, and, uh, and the things that, uh, you know, they're going to try to do against us. We have to play uh, the way we play. We have to get contributions from everybody. Uh, I like the pace of our game. I think we can still improve that. I think we can push the envelope and improve the pace of our play, and we can continue to improve our, our play without the puck in the neutral zone as well as our defense. Defensive zone. You're ranking in about the top eight in the nation in goals scored per game. What about what you've been able to do scoring the puck so far this season? Well, I think it's just everybody chipping in. You know, I had a, a, a question uh, on Saturday morning about uh, a couple of fourth line guys scoring, and I said, oh, which line is that? <laughs> and, and I mean that. I, I don't feel like we have uh, a top line. I don't feel like we have a fourth line. We're trying to build four lines that can play, that can play against everybody and anybody. Uh, and uh, that's what's going to give us our opportunity, I think, to be successful and play with pace uh, and get everybody involved. All right, Dave, good luck this weekend against Miami. We'll have both games for you on Midco Sports Network, and we'll recap the series next week here on the show. We're back with more after this. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. North Dakota was the preseason pick to win the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. In the preseason poll, UND collected 12 first place votes 
Miami collected nine first place votes. This weekend, the showdown between the top two favorites in the conference this weekend here inside Ralph Engelstead Arena. Miami blessed with offensive talent. Really pick your poison when it comes to the Miami forwards. But a couple of Miami players to watch this weekend, Blake Coleman and Riley Barber. Each talented forwards, they each share uh, the team lead in scoring right now. You can also throw Austin Zarnik into that mix. And uh, Miami at this point is off to a 7-3 and three start, 3-1 three and one in the NCHC following a sweep of Colorado College this past weekend. One thing to keep your eye on for Miami this coming weekend is what Enrico Blase will do with goaltending. Ryan McKay played most of the minutes last season, but recently over the last couple of weeks, Jay Williams has been seeing more and more time in the Nets for Miami. We'll have both games for you live on Midco Sports Network this weekend. Join me, Scott Kobrinski, and Katie Hale for coverage of this uh, key early season NCHC series. We are with you 7.30 on Friday night and then back with you 7 o'clock on Saturday night for the series finale. Well, this is Veterans Day. And to all of you who have served our country, we say thank you. Thank you for fighting the battles and thank you for preserving the freedoms that we enjoy. We'll see you next week.